So this video is going to be about chromosomes and sexual life cycles. So first let's look at some important definitions. So a gene is going to be the hereditary unit of genetic information. So genes are what's actually passed on from one generation to the next. So gametes are going to be haploid reproductive cells that are produced by meiosis or they're produced by the cells um, that are descendants of those produced by meiosis. And so when we have two of these haploid um, gametes coming together and fusing, that's fertilization in which we produce a diploid zygote. And so zygote is just the diploid cell that's produced by fertilization. So lastly, we have a locus. So a locus is going to be a specific place along a chromosome where a particular gene is going to be found. So when we describe chromosomes, one way we can do that is with a karyotype. So with a karyotype, we're going to take the chromosomes out of a cell and we're going to arrange them by size and shape. That way we can look at them and see um, if there's anything wrong or really be able to see what's going on in this cell. So to even understand karyotypes and to understand other genetic processes, it's important to have an understanding of homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes are going to be a pair of chromosomes that code for the same genes, but which are not identical. And so by not identical, I mean that they can have different versions of a same gene. So for example, different alleles for the same gene. So this would be a pair of homologous chromosomes right here. So each one of these is going to be a sister chromatid. And so these two are sister chromatids and these two are sister chromatids. But as a whole pair, they're homologous chromosomes. And then these two in the middle or these two on the outside would not be sister chromatids because they are um, carrying the same genes, but they're not identical, which is our definition of homologous chromosome. So sex chromosomes, so sex chromosomes are the ones that are responsible for determining the sex of an individual. So that's gonna be our X and our Y chromosomes. And so then we have our autosomes, which is basically gonna be anything that's not um, a sex chromosome. And so um, lastly, we're gonna talk really briefly about the idea of haploid versus diploid. So diploid is gonna be 2N is the notation. And so in this example, 2N equals six. So a diploid cell is going to have six chromosomes. So a haploid cell then is only going to have three right here. So each one of these would be the haploid gamete, uh, gamete that came from that parent. So the haploid gamete from the mother would have three chromosomes and the haploid from the father would have three. And then when these fuse to make the diploid zygote, we get six, which is our diploid number. So lastly, we're going to look at asexual versus sexual reproduction. So in asexual, we have just a single parent. The offspring are going to be genetically identical to that parent. So there's no uh, variation at all in this process. So there's going to be no fusion of gametes. So if there's no variation, then we don't need fusion of gametes. And so moving on to sexual reproduction, then we have two parents. The offspring combine genes from both of those parents. We have lots of genetic variation because of this combination process. Um, and even going into just humans, we have this life cycle of humans. So the number of chromosomes is halved during meiosis to make these gametes, but then it's doubled at fertilization. And so in each one of these gametes um, produced in the ovary and the testes to make the sperm and egg, we're going to have haploids. And so in humans, that haploid number is 23. And so um, then these haploid cells fuse in fertilization to make a diploid zygote with 46 chromosomes, and then we undergo um, mitosis and further development. And so like I said, haploid is 23, diploid is 46. So in other species, something that's important that we see a lot is alternation of generations. So in alternation of generations, we're going to switch between multicellular haploid and multicellular diploid stages. So we can see that in this picture. So um, in this half right here, see we have our multicellular diploid stages, and then we also have our multicellular haploid stages. And so the um, multicellular diploid is called the sporophyte, and the multicellular haploid would be called the gametophyte. And so very similarly, we have something um, of the same kind going on with fungi and some protists. 
where we have the um, multicellular haploid and the multicellular or multicellular diploid and multicellular haploid. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.